Hello, my name is Anna and today we're talking about Little Women, the movie adaptation by Greta Gerwig. I've watched it in the day it launched in Brazil and like anyone who has dared to watch a movie about women, I fell in love with it. I think this is a triumph for Greta, not only in the amazing directing, but especially in the script adaptation. To me, Greta wins this by changing up the timeline. In the book, we have a very straightforward passing of time and women growing up and a coming of age, which is all great. We see them from childhood and early teenagehood into adulthood. However, when Greta jumps around and mixes present and past and different times in the past, she makes for much stronger feelings, especially in Joe, and the narrative gains a lot more depth. And we can feel Joe's loneliness in a much more real way. I also have to say that the way she did the ending was pretty marvelous and something Joe March herself and Louisa May Alcott would be proud of. Basically, spoilers ahead, but at the same time, if you don't know the story of Little Women, what are you doing? But she takes the normal ending of the book and, and flips it on its head. First of all, Jo is the one that publishes her own work. She is independent on a man to do it. She does it herself. And then we have the biggest twist of all, which is we don't know if the ending is the ending or not. Basically, in the book, we do have Joe March marrying at the end of the book, but here it becomes a lot more open and you can interpret it as being true or not. Because Joe has to negotiate an ending where her main character gets married and she's like, that's ludicrous. She never wanted to get married. And they basically say, well, but it is the times and you have to do it which I believe it's something that Alcott herself must have taught and it makes total sense with the character and now you can choose which narrative you want the one where she's free and independent and doesn't marry or the one where she stays with the guy that she likes which to be honest I always thought Jo was much better off by herself being her own woman but if you want to believe she marries someone, I guess Louis Gahel isn't a bad choice either. Especially with the fact that he is the only person in the entire movie that contradicts her, that has the courage to say, no, this is shit. Jo becomes a lot more responsible for her own fate. She doesn't have a book published by a man handed over to her. She fights for it herself. She is the owner of her work and she negotiates whether or not her main character should get married. And you can understand that as being open for interpretation for herself and her own choices. And I do think Jo herself and Louisa May Alcott would totally agree with this open ending because this choice wasn't a choice it was very much something that you had to do at the times I also think Greta brings this modern sensibility into other places especially Amy she makes Amy a lot more nuanced and deeper which let's be honest isn't the case in the book there she's pretty unredeemable but for the movie adaptation maybe she shouldn't be Snape let's change her up to this other character stop everything if you hear my neighbor shouting in the background, there's nothing I can do about that, so I'm sorry. Back to the show. She brings those mother sensibilities a lot to Amy. She gives Amy some purpose and puts some very Jane Austen-esque lines in her mouth, which I thought was a little bit funny, but also very important to develop her character further. All of that talk about marriage being a social construct and a financial decision for a woman at the time is very much Jane Austen-esque and a modern sensibility brought to Amy. In the books she just wants to marry rich because she wants to. It's not to help her family or because society demands that of her. It's basically just because she wants to and that's her 
whole personality, I guess. But here she questions it, and I think that's so important. And I also think she makes Amy and Joe a lot more alike. I mean, the fact that Amy wants to be great or nothing at all, and she has ambition, I do think that this version of Amy and Joe are a lot more alike than they think they are. Amy envies Joe's easy talent and the way that she's brilliant without even trying while she's mediocre on her art. And I think Jo envies what she perceives or is in fact true, <laughs> at least in the books, as Amy having everything she ever wanted and having things come very easy for her. Both of them have a strained relationship because they want something that the other has and don't realize it. Which basically brings me to my one and only problem with this movie. Don't get me wrong, I love the shit out of this. I think this is incredible and I think this is a triumph for Greta and I think she deserves every award ever. But I do have to point out a few things. And to me, the main one is the relationship between Amy and Joe. In the books, yes, they are strained and they aren't exactly friends, but that makes sense. They don't have anything in common and they're basically from different planets. While here, they are a lot more in common than we think. And the fact that they never talk or resolve this, and it's basically, well, our sister died, so let's be friends now, makes me a little bit angry. I wish they would talk to each other and confront each other and come to an understanding deeper than we have. I also do think that one of the elements that makes their relationship even stranger is Lori. I think Greta actually likes Laurie way too much and she's afraid of messing him up. She's afraid of pointing out his flaws and making them big plot points. I mean, yes, we do see how he doesn't study and he drinks a lot and he likes to party and he has no ambition or no interest really. But what we don't see is how he's very much unsuitable for Joe. I think those elements should be ramped up a little bit. What we see are little glimpses, little tastes, but it's not fully developed. We don't see how they actually navigate through different social lives or they have different ambitions in lives and different wishes. I also think that the Amy Laurie relationship at the end is a little bit off because of basically two elements. One, I don't think this version of Amy actually truly loves Laurie. Not that I think that the book version actually truly loves Laurie. It's much more of a he's rich and cute and meh. But I do think that the version of Amy that Greta built and that I love so much wouldn't settle for Laurie because she doesn't really love him. She just wants something that Joe has. The same way that she wants her talent and her spirit and her gut. Laurie is just another representation of the broken relationship between the two sisters. So I go back again to the fact that I wish they had talked, I mean Joe and Amy. But back to Laurie, I also think one major element that is missing is how much Laurie was lonely before and how maybe he never truly loved Joe or he never truly loved Amy, he just wanted to be on March. Do you remember the Owen Wilson character in The Royal Tenenbaums? I think Laurie is that character. He just wants to be a part of the family and he loves Joe first, not because she's the true love of his life or anything, but simply because she's the one that introduces him to this world. And when he sees the opportunity to be a March through Amy, he takes it. And I think this element is lacking in the movie, so the relationship between Laurie and Amy becomes very weird. But all of that's not to say that I don't love this movie. I think it's fucking incredible. The open ending, the timeline, and especially Saoirse Ronan and Laura Dern's interpretations. It's obvious that this movie is carried by Saoirse Ronan and I do hope that she and Greta collaborate a lot more. I mean, if you're gonna have a muse, Saoirse is a pretty incredible one. When she breaks the fourth wall and looks at the camera, I got shivers down my spine. Every time she and Laura Dern look at each other, it's magic. 
It's like time stops and you just see them communicating through just one look. It's truly incredible. It may be my favorite part of the movie when the two of them are in a scene together. There are certain people that are magnetic and that the camera loves and I think Saoirse is one of them and I think Laura Dern is one of them. Overall, I just think this movie deserves a lot of love and a lot of respect and I wish the Golden Globes had recognized it and I wish the Academy would recognize it and I wish it got all of the awards possible because all of these women together that made this movie deserve it a lot more than some of the guys getting praise. Uh, that's basically it for my review, I'll see you guys later, bye!